Hi and welcome to my studio. Later today I should be taking delivery of a new Yamaha Modi X. I thought it would be a good idea to share with you my progress in setting up the Modi X in a typical home studio environment. Um, in my case I'll be using Cubase, but really this would all these settings would apply to all doors. Um, and uh, in sharing these with you, it may help you make a decision in whether or not the Modi X is right for you. Uh, so if you are interested in following my progress, I'll also be covering other, other synth topics and perhaps recording topics and VSTs, etc. Then uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be kept up to date with all the latest information. As you can see, I use a Korg Kronos as my master keyboard, which has aftertouch. The Modi X does not. So I'll be looking at alternative ways of implementing aftertouch in my new setup, particularly when using soft synths. I'll also be looking at the process needed to record ARPs and uh, drum patterns uh, into your door um, and how that works with MIDI clock. Um, that's something I'm keen to try out for myself. One of the first things you're going to probably need to do on the Modi X is to update your operating system and uh, to check the version that you're running press the utility button uh, press settings select system and under modex firmware you'll see that it's running version 1.10 i think it ships with 1.0.1 um, this is something you're probably going to want to do straight away prior to doing that you do need a blank formatted usb stick and that was the area that i had problems with so Let's show you how to do that. Again, staying in the utility mode, you need to go to utility contents. Um, where I had a problem was every time I selected the USB stick, uh, it would just want to give me system volume information. The trick is to, uh, before you select it, make sure you select job and then tap on uh, the name of the stick and you'll see it says format. I gave it the name Modi X. That makes sure that it's in the correct format that the Modi X can recognize. Then copy your update file onto that and away you go. But that was a quite straightforward procedure and uh, you'll find out how to do that on the download instructions with your system update from Yamaha. Yamaha have tried to make your MIDI settings on the Modi X as straightforward as possible for use within a door. So uh, to get to your MIDI settings, select uh, the utility mode, then go to quick setup. So settings, quick setup, uh, and you'll see at the bottom of the screen are four quick setups that you can quickly uh, adjust the settings within the Modi X to work with, within your door. The first thing you're going to want to do is to basically, the, the default setting is standalone mode where keyboard behaves exactly as you'd expect um, and then the second one is MIDI record on door now anyone who's ever recorded on a door uh, via a workstation or via a traditional keyboard will know that the first thing you have to do is to switch off local control so when we uh, select that you'll see that local control is switched off it's just a helpful quick handy shortcut that lets you do this um, and then if you're ever going out say uh, taking the keyboard out and performing with it, you just quickly knock it back into standalone mode. So the second mode is called ARP Record on Door, and you'll notice that the arpeggiator is moved effectively to the left before the local control to go straight out of the MIDI out. So ARP Record on Door is what you want to do if you, well, you want to select if you want to record the arpeggios. Uh, and then finally, there's audio record on door. If you have your driver set up within your uh, door, you can actually use the Modi X as an audio interface and record the audio directly from the Modi X into your door itself. So now you've seen how the quick setup modes work on the Modi X, let's move into Cubase to illustrate how you might integrate the Modi X into a door environment. So here we are in Cubase, and as you can see, I've set up um, a track a MIDI track labeled Modi X uh, that's set to USB input and output Modi X1 and just for the purpose of illustration I've set up a standalone uh, a track I've labeled standalone it doesn't do anything there's no MIDI input and output connected it's just to show that the Modi X is um, 
operating and not, not routing its MIDI through the door, just handling its MIDI itself. So let's select a performance that I want to use. So I'm calling up a performance now, 8 amps and a TC. So uh, there are four various scenes um, in this uh, performance. So it's four different settings of basically amplifier settings on a, gu on a guitar sound. So let's audition scene number one. Scene number two. Totally different, that one's very uh, clean sound. Scene number four. That's an overdriven sound. Let's imagine that's the one we want to incorporate into the track. So, what we need to do is uh, move back into the utility mode and select MIDI record on door. So, I've done that now and as you'd expect, you can't hear anything when set to standalone mode. So if I move now to this, which is set up ready to use the USB, it should work first time. And it doesn't. Uh, but something's going on, because if you look at the MIDI um, meter, the monitors here, it's receiving MIDI from the Modi X, but it's not retransmitting it back out. So what is going on? Well, the answer is actually quite straightforward. Um, this is a real-life problem, problem that I encountered, probably because I'm quite used to working with the Core Kronos, um, and the way the Modi X behaves is a little bit different. So let's try and analyse what's going on by looking at it in a utility program. So here we are inside MIDI Ox. MIDI Ox is a great little utility program. You can download it yourself. It's freeware. Uh, just Google for MIDI hyphen Ox and uh, you should find it no problem at all. It's a great little utility that lets you analyze your MIDI and work out what's going on. So let's call up that performance again, eight amps and a TC and work out what's going on. So I'm literally gonna press middle C on the keyboard. <laughs> And what's pretty clear is that you can see it's transmitting the C4 note on information, but it's on eight simultaneous MIDI channels, MIDI channels one to eight. So I'm going to release the note now, and there's the note off information for those same eight MIDI channels. So that's quite a different approach to a lot of keyboards. Maybe those of you with the Motive series may find that it, uh, it worked that way all the time. Certainly, I'm used to the uh, the core Kronos, and that had a global channel um, as well as multiple MIDI channels. And the global channel would handle um, basically all the uh, performances in a, in a slightly different way to the way that's being handled on the Modi X. So um, that's what's going on in that particular patch. It was actually transmitting on MIDI channels one to eight and receiving on MIDI channels one to eight. So there's an easy solution to that, which we'll analyze in Cubase. But let's look into this a little bit more. So that was eight amps and a TC. Let's call it the very next patch, which is called Clean Fingers. That uses two uh, elements within the performance. Um, so let's press middle C and see what happens on that again. So there's the note, and you can see it's transmitted on MIDI channel one and two. So basically it transmits on each channel for each part that's assigned within a performance. So if there are four parts in a performance, it'll transmit on MIDI channels one to four. If there are two, it'll just be one to two. And if it's all eight, hence it'll use all eight. So let's go back into Cubase armed with that information and uh, find out how we can apply that, hopefully in your door. So here we are back in Cubase. Uh, I've got the same patch called up, 8 amps and a TC. Still nothing when I play it, because, because basically it's uh, set to receive on MIDI channel 1. Now, that would be absolutely fine on something like a Kronos, because it, of that global channel that I talked about earlier. But on the Modi X, that particular part of the performance, it's transmitting and receiving on channel 4. So we'd need to select channel 4. <laughs> and it'll work. However, a much more elegant solution is just to select a MIDI channel, any. On your door it may be labelled Omni, um, but basically on Cubase it's any, and then whatever the uh, performance is set up for, it will transmit and re receive on the correct MIDI channels. So now we're going to record an arpeggio pattern from the Modi X into Cubase. Uh, this should work with any door. Uh, it can be problematical on some um, 
workstation style keyboards actually recording arpeggio patterns um, but they've tried to make it as painless as possible on the Modi X so uh, first of all we'll select a sound and I've chosen finger 12 string and I'm going to switch the arpeggio on and it's will select one of the standard arpeggio patterns that comes with the Modi X. But now we want to record that into Cubase. So firstly, we need to uh, uh, switch to the utility mode again and call up the third option along, which is called Quit Up, Quick Setup Number Two Arpeggio Record on Door. Uh, so I've done that now, and I'll go back to the performance so I can see what I'm doing. And now we're ready to record. So as you can see, we've recorded the arpeggio pattern into the uh, into Cubase. Now, when you come to play it back, I'd suggest you disable the art button on the Modi X and it will play back correctly. So one little tip, if you're working in, if you're recording an arpeggio that records on multiple MIDI channels, simply select your part on Cubase, you go up to the MIDI menu and select uh, dissolve part and it will split that into the individual channels. On some uh, workstations it might be called explode. There are various other commands that let you get at the individual MIDI data. This is quite a straightforward arpeggio but on some of the complex ones you may find you need to do that. So to bring this video to a close let's record one of the audition phrases into Cubase this uses uh, various performance controls, uh, so we're recording both the performance data, the node data, and arpeggio data all at the same time.